Thank you, Michael. Right now, a man is in serious condition after a shooting in Woodlawn. Birmingham police responded to the scene at 55th Street North and 1st Avenue North just before 9 last night. Police say the victim was shot in the chest and the two other suspects in the case may be juveniles. The victim was taken to UAB Hospital with serious injuries. We know he was able to give police a statement about the shooting. So far, no arrests have been made. Also happening now in Etowah County, an investigation into an officer involved shooting is still happening. Police say a sheriff's deputy and police officer stopped Jeremy Rona on Owens Drive in Gadsden to ask him about a burglary. Now at some point he fired at the officers and they fired back. No officers were hurt, but Rona was hit and taken to the hospital. His injuries are non-life threatening. Authorities have not said if or if any of those charges we, he will face any of those charges, but they do tell us Rona and three act has three active warrants against him for burglary, robbery, and a probation violation. This morning, an Irondale man is behind bars after allegedly stealing and torturing his neighbor's dog to death. Such a sad, sad story here. Irondale police say 34 year old David Bearden broke into his neighbor's home and stole his neighbor's rat terrier and some prescription drugs. Later that day, the neighbors found the dog's body on the porch. Bearden faces several charges, including animal cruelty and burglary. He's in the Jefferson County Jail on more than $30,000 bond. New this morning, firefighters are still trying to gain ground on the Erskine fire as it continues to burn out of control in Kern County, California. Check out these latest images right here from that fire overnight. At least two people are dead after flames ripped through a community in Lake Isabella. A state of emergency is now in place for Kern County. More than 30,000 acres are scorched and nearly 100 structures are destroyed. Right now, the fire is only 5% contained. New this morning, a tragic scene out of Prince George's County in Maryland. Three people are dead and two are hurt after a shooting. Police say two women and a man were killed at a home on Orleans Avenue in District Heights around 930 last night. Police are still searching for a suspect this morning. Preliminarily, we do not believe this to be a random act. Um, we are urging that anyone who may have been in the area around this time, who may have seen anything or heard anything, um, to please call police. Police say a fourth victim is in stable condition, while a fifth is suffering from critical injuries. An investigation into a drug trafficking organization ends in a drug raid in Bessemer after a search on Norwood Drive. Authorities found cocaine and meth inside a home there. The drugs were worth nearly $250,000. Authorities also found five handguns and an assault rifle, plus $25,000 in cash. Investigators arrested Juan Lopez on trafficking illegal drug charges. He is in the Jefferson County Jail on a bond of $60,000. Well, we have an update on a deadly car crash in Tuscaloosa County. This happened near the Black Warrior River Bridge just after 10 Friday morning. Troopers say 86-year-old Ray Allen died when his car collided with a truck driven by 77-year-old Charles Phillips. Allen died on the scene. Phillips was taken to the hospital. The extent of his injuries is still unknown at this time. Troopers are investigating what caused that crash. And we're also working to learn more about what happened after a deadly crash in Etowah County yesterday. One person died after an 18-wheeler heading westbound on I-759 in Etowah County crossed the median. That truck hit another 18-wheeler near the Black Creek exit. One driver was killed. The other was taken to the hospital. Right now, investigators need your help finding a Graysville woman who has been missing since April. 43-year-old Tammy Skinner Blackwell was last seen at her home on April 4th and hasn't returned since. If you know where she could be, please call the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department. That number is 325-1451. And well, as Michael mentioned earlier, we are under a weather aware this weekend because of the intense heat that is rolling through. And that means you need to stay hydrated, of course. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, you shouldn't wait until you're thirsty to drink more fluids. As a matter of fact, drinking two to four cups of water every hour while working 
or outside or exercising is so important. And of course, do your best to avoid alcohol and sugary drinks. For more information on the importance of hydration, go to our website, WIAT.com. And let me tell you, some of what you may learn could surprise you. You can find the article by clicking on news, then links. Right now, a lot of people are heading to Oak Mountain State Park to hit the beach and take a dip in the lake. Dozens set up shop along the beach Friday. Family and friends were able to meet up at the lake and enjoy quality time by the water. And if you're planning to do the same, make sure you have sunscreen and a cool water to drink. One woman says she always has those on hand to make sure her grandkids are safe. I'm making sure they have plenty of water to drink. We use sunscreen on them and usually bring them in about every 15 minutes for the shade. If you don't have a place to escape the hot temperatures, Birmingham Salvation Army is here to help. The group is opening a cooling station for people looking to get out of that heat. When the heat index is over 96, like it will be this weekend, the Salvation Army opens its doors. This is on 11th Avenue North during the day for anyone wanting to keep cool. Now, to learn more about the cooling station, you can call the number that's on our screen. And of course, we have a lot more on ways to stay cool on our website, WIAT.com. Just search hot temperatures. Well, your time right now is 607. Get ready to grab your inner tube and hit the slide straight ahead. What you need to know about slide the city happening today in Vestavia Hills. Michael. Okay, that's one way to cool off. Uh, weather aware because of the heat and humidity later on this afternoon, it'll feel like 100 to 105. Live look outside at 76 right now. More on this steamy forecast after this. You're watching the CBS 42 Morning News. Good Saturday morning to you, Central Alabama. The sun is up. Temperatures, they're climbing right now at Birmingham Shuttleworth International Airport 76. On the thermometer, wind is calm. Dew point 72. Okay, it feels like 76. About an hour ago, it felt a little warmer, but the heat is on. Weather aware in place today and tomorrow because of the heat. Heat advisory kicks in at 12 o'clock this afternoon, and it'll run through 9 o'clock uh, tonight. It'll feel like 100 to 105, maybe even a touch hotter than that. So heads up, lightweight, light color clothing, H2O is a way to go. Make sure you stay hydrated. Here's a look at the counties that are officially in the heat advisory, but Gadsden, Anison, I want you just to be aware that it's going to be downright hot. 
even though at this point in time you're not technically underneath the heat advisory. All right, off across parts of eastern Mississippi around Louisville, we've got a few showers that are developing right now. These are lifting to the north. Again, temperatures are going to skyrocket into the lower 90s between 11 and 12 o'clock this afternoon and peak out at 97, I think. Our average high is 89. If you're going to head down to Clanton and the Peach Festival as it wraps up today, temperatures will be in the mid and upper 90s. Again, weather aware in place today and tomorrow. Storm chance goes up to 50% Monday and then kind of holds anywhere between 40% to 30%. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and next Friday. Okay, a diamond engagement ring that Donald Trump gave to a second wife is set to be auctioned in New York City Wednesday. The 7.45 carat Harry Winston emerald cut ring is estimated to fetch about 300,000 bucks. Trump's ex uh, Marla Maples previously auctioned the ring after she and the business mogul divorced in 1999. It sold for $110,000. Wow, look the at that The bling ring. bling ring. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. I don't know if uh, we're all lucky to get something like that, but look at that. You know the ring that kind of reminds me of? What? Ashley Gann's ring. Oh, she does have, she a, does have a beautiful engagement ring, yes, that's for does. sure. Well, happening today, an event hundreds have been waiting for. A huge inflatable water slide is coming to Jefferson County. Look at this being set up right here. Slide the city is popping up in Vestavia Hills. It's a thousand foot slip and slide that the whole family can take a trip down. The slide opens today at 9 a.m. on Lime Rock Road. That's right next to Vestavia Hills High School. You can get your ticket at the gate for $20. You and your family can also enjoy some good food and help a local cause this weekend. It's all wrapped in one. The Birmingham Summer Food Truck Rally will take place at Regions Field on Sunday. The rally gives you a chance to sample foods from local food trucks and also raise money for Pathways Foundation and the ALS Association. The food truck rally begins at 1 and lasts until 6 p.m. There will also be live music and fun activities for the kids. For ticket information, head to our website, WIAT.com. Well, your time right now is 613. Pride celebrations continue with Titan security after the break. What some pride goers are saying about the festival just two weeks after a mass shooting at a gay club. You're watching the CBS 42 Morning News as you wake you up on your Saturday morning. Live look over Birmingham. We'll be right back.
watching the CBS 42 Morning News. Welcome back. New this morning, Pride Month is coming to a close, and there's been extra security at many celebrations, of course, following the terror attack in Orlando. In San Francisco, the city has promised a 20 to 25 percent increase in police officers on the streets, with some in uniform and some undercover. And while everyone wants to stay safe, some say the increased police presence and the weight of the shooting will change the vibe of this year's Pride. Extra cautious going in, and I might be not not around big crowds. I mean, I'm still going to be out with my people, but um, it's tough. People heading to San Francisco's Pride celebration will also be subject to metal detectors. Bags will also be searched. Happening today, do you think you have what it takes to be a police officer? Well, if so, Birmingham Police want to hire you. Birmingham Police will start hiring today. It's happening at the Birmingham Police Academy. That's on 425 6th Avenue South. If you're interested, head on over to the Academy from 8 to 11 this morning. Well, Michael, as people are waking up and thinking about how they're going to be starting their day, one thing I know they definitely want to think about is staying hydrated because the temperatures are going to be hot through the roof yeah. uh, heat advisory goes into place for most of us here in central alabama at 12 o'clock this afternoon that's why we have a weather aware in place today and also tomorrow because of the heat so here's what we're tracking the weather headlines on this saturday morning weather aware today and tomorrow the afternoon heat advisory kicks off at 12 o'clock uh, today this afternoon and runs until nine o'clock tonight feels like temperatures Anywhere from 100 to 105. In some instances, I think it'll be over 105. So that's right. Hydrate, lightweight, light color clothing. You're going to hear me say this a lot over the summer. H2O is the way to go to keep yourself hydrated. Here's a look at the map and counties that are technically underneath this heat advisory. Okay, it does not include you and Aniston and Gadsden, but I just want you to be aware it's going to be downright hot across all of central Alabama, including northeast Alabama. So hydrate and do the lightweight, light colored clothing if you're going to be outdoors. And if you're going to kick it by the pool, don't forget the sunscreen. It only takes about 10 minutes for your skin to burn. All right, across parts of East Mississippi right now, around Louisville, a little cluster of showers developing. So we can't rule out an isolated shower or storm as we head through our Saturday. Right now, 76, the sun is up. The wind is calm. Dew point 72 feels just like the actual air temperature for the time being. But our hour by hour forecast showing the temperature marching upward. A pair of eights at 10 o'clock this morning by 12, mid 90s. Our average high for this time of year is 89. So above the mark, I think we're going to hit at least 97, 1, 2 o'clock this afternoon. And again, that's going to feel more like 105 to maybe even 110 degrees. If you're going to head down to the Chilton County Peach Festival as it wraps up today, uh, the peaches are absolutely delicious. The people are so nice. Thanks for having me yesterday morning. It's going to be hot. Temperatures in the mid-90s. We do have a very weak cool front to our north, but an area of high pressure to the south across the panhandle of Florida and Alabama. So that's going to keep that front pretty much parked to our north. Showers and storms back off to our west. Storm track, future cast, clouds, radar. And temperatures starting at 8 o'clock this morning, low 80s across most of central Alabama. White as cloud cover, so I think we'll see some passing clouds from time to time. 96 uh, in Jasper, and as we get into the 4 o'clock hour, the mid to upper 90s. And again, that's the actual air temperature, not factoring in uh, the humidity for the heat index, and that again will be well in the triple digits. Overnight into tomorrow morning, a muggy start as we settle down into the upper 70s, lower 80s, and tomorrow afternoon is going to be downright hot once again. Don't forget, you can get the forecast anytime, anywhere with our storm track weather app. It's in the App Store and Google Play Store. That rain and storm chance increases Monday into Tuesday. Afternoon highs stay hot and steamy in the lower 90s, overnight lows in the low to mid 70s. Grab right. a fan. Absolutely. Fan, water, whatever else you need to stay cool. You got it. Because <laughs> the heat is on. Well, your time right now is 621. It's never too late to start planning for your future. Next, how you can help your children learn to manage their finances right now. Live look.
You're watching the CBS 42 Morning News. Welcome back. Well, parents, let's face it. Your child is growing up and they're growing up fast. And it's never too early to help them learn about one major part of their life, and that's their finances. Jacoby Kindred from America's first federal credit union is here to tell us about helping your student prepare for the future. First of all, thank you so much for being here. This is a really important topic. Obviously, young people, sometimes we could be a little careless. They could be a little careless with yes. money. I say we because I still want to consider myself pretty young. But what are the basics they need to know when they're starting off a checking account? Uh, one, it, it depends on their age. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the biggest things. Uh, if they're a minor, they still have to have mm -hmm. their parent to come in. And uh, it, many parents like to get their children started before they go off to college right. or start their first job graduating from mm -hmm. high school. Um, but basics uh, that they need is a student ID, uh, and that's it. I mean, sorry, not student ID, state ID. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, as long as they have that with parent consent, we get that open for them right away. Uh, gotcha. One of the nice things that we do is we make our debit cards right okay. at our location so they don't have to wait seven to ten business oh. days to, to receive it. That's so they have that immediate access along with their direct deposit information as well. And you know, you're telling me a lot of information now, good information, but of course when we're talking about students, uh, sometimes, you know, don't always know how to manage their money perfectly. Mm -hmm. And certainly when we talk about credit cards, that <laughs> wonderful thing that we all love but we hate when the bill comes later. Yes. Uh, what do uh, students need to know and parents need to know about their kids setting up those credit cards? All right, one thing that we encourage is when they get started, uh, try not to get anything that will overwhelm you. Mm -hmm. uh, we have what we call our ND Visa. Mm -hmm. um, it's a low balance credit card. It starts at $500 balance. Um, and we have them to try to manage it. Don't overspend. That, gotcha. That's one of the biggest things. It's easy to know oh, that you have yes. it there. <laughs> so you want to make sure you don't overspend. You want to stay within your budget. And that's right. one of the biggest things that we encourage them to do is to create a budget. Yeah. Um, many people, when they think of budget, they think of something restrictive. Right. You know? But it, it really gives you more freedom to manage your money and be able to do more with it by setting that. And talking about a budget, any tips, I guess, that you would give in terms of making sure that you set up a good budget? Because it's one thing to say it, but it's another thing when you're sitting down saying, okay, Okay, well, how do I do all of this? Yeah. One thing that I, I would tell uh, people about setting up a budget is be realistic. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's one of the biggest things. But uh, discipline yourself as well. So right. actually sit down and put it in writing. And when I say put it down in writing, my wife and I, we put it down in Excel, in an Excel spreadsheet. So uh, we, we work on making sure we stay in those parameters. And so you have to be realistic in what you're doing. So if you're on the go a lot, setting your budget, you know, for eating out, there's no point in buying a lot of groceries if it's just going to sit in your fridge. So you kind of have to work it according to your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But you want to kind of be realistic in that aspect of setting that budget. Great. And one thing I didn't get to, but I'll ask you, and we're going to have on our website as well, what students should know about those loans. I know that's also really important as well. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna get to that information after the break. I'll make sure okay. we put that on sure. our website. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh -huh. And right now a man we know is battling his landlord after a rate hike rate hike of four hundred percent. Vic Lee has his story. This apartment building sits in the heart of North Beach on the corner of Columbus and Scotland Street. What? It's also famous. Scenes from Clint Eastwood's 1988 movie, The Deadpool, were shot here. Check the killer view from apartment 25, where tenant Neil Hutchinson lives. I've lived here a long time. Uh, I pay my rent on time. But apparently, that wasn't enough to satisfy his landlord. He raised his rent from 1800 a month to a whopping $8,000 a month. No reason given. I've basically been hit with a rent increase of 400%. I don't know where I'm going to go if I have to leave here. Scott Weaver is with the San Francisco Tenants Union. He's fought a lot of huge rent increases. I don't know if there's been one that, that large. There could have been, but uh, I don't remember one. The rent hike went into effect at the beginning of this month. In the meantime, Hutchinson filed an appeal with the San Francisco Rent Board, which adjudicates issues like this. They'll decide in early August or so. But suddenly, 
the landlord served an eviction notice. Hutchinson now has to get out by July 21st, weeks before that decision comes. So I could be evicted before that decision even comes through. So uh, I honestly don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm struggling here. Hutchinson's lawyer says she'll file a response to the eviction next week to buy her client more time. The landlord has yet to return our calls. Vic Lee, ABC 7 News. Good morning, Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, Anniston, and all of Central Alabama. You're watching the CBS 42 Morning News. Good morning, I'm Alex Finney. It is the weekend, and we're going to get you started off on the right foot. Thanks so much for joining us. We have some big stories, but of course, the biggest one, I think, for all of us here is that weather, those sizzling temperatures, right, Michael? It is hot, yes. yes. And because of that, today is a weather-aware day. Heads up, the heat, the humidity. When you combine the two, the feels like temperature will be through the roof. The heat advisory kicks in at 12 o'clock this afternoon and runs through 9 o'clock tonight. I'll outline that for you here in a second. So again, weather aware today and P.S. tomorrow too because of the heat. So the afternoon heat advisory that goes through 9 o'clock tonight, it'll feel like 100 to 105 plus. Here's a look at the breakdown of the counties that are technically underneath this heat advisory. But Gadsden, Anniston, I still want you to be aware that the temperature is going to be hot enough that you as well need to take those precautions to stay Cool, hydrate, lightweight, light color clothing. Back off across East Mississippi around Louisville, a cluster of showers lifting to the north. Can't rule out a shower, maybe an isolated storm later on this afternoon. Live look outside across the Magic City, 76. The wind is calm, dew point 72. It feels like 76. However, as we continue to march through our Saturday, the temperatures climb out of the 70s into the lower 90s by 11 o'clock this morning. This is the actual forecast air temperature not even taking into account the humidity and the heat index. So 97 will feel more like 105 as we get into the 2 o'clock hour. All right, heat advisory in place today and tomorrow, both weather aware days. The storm chance a little higher uh, Monday at 50% overnight temperatures in the low to mid 70s. Alex. All right, thank you, Michael. New this morning, President Obama's approval rating is now at 52%. That's up 1% since last month, according to a new CNN poll. It's the third straight CNN poll showing a majority approval for the president. And those positive ratings, well, it could also give a boost to Hillary Clinton in her bid for presidency. But will it all play out? Well, that's the question many are asking after a shocking decision by UK voters to leave the European Union. Political experts say it could be a preview of November's general election in the U.S. CBS 42 national correspondent Mark Meredith is in Washington with more. Overseas and in the middle of the action, Donald Trump is starting the weekend in Scotland and putting himself in the global spotlight. It's an amazing day, very historic day for a lot of reasons. Speaking from his golf resort, Trump is comparing the decision by U.K. voters to leave the European Union as a similar situation American voters will face in November. I really do see a parallel between what's happening in the United States and what ha what's happening here. People want to see borders. Trump's European visit comes after a particularly rough week on the campaign trail. Trump fired his campaign manager, admitted his fundraising numbers are significantly less compared to Democrats, and continues to face uncertainty about his support from fellow Republicans. Thank you. Hillary Clinton will head to Indianapolis on Sunday to speak before a U.S. conference of mayors. But it's her former rival, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, who's stealing the spotlight, saying for the first time he'll support Clinton in the fall. Are you going to vote for Hillary Clinton in November? Yes. Yeah, I think uh, the issue right here is uh, I'm going to do everything I can to defeat Donald Trump. While Sanders says he's going to vote for Clinton, there's still no word when we're going to see that endorsement or some sort of joint appearance. We may have to wait up until the convention in Philadelphia, which is now one month away. That's a quick look at where things stand in the race for the White House in Washington. I'm Mark Meredith. 
New this morning, world leaders continue to react to the Brexit vote, including President Obama. He attended the Global Entrepreneurship in summit, summit in Palo Alto, California. He also made a campaign stop for Washington Governor Jay Inslee Friday. The governor spoke with British Prime the, the president spoke with British Prime Minister David Cameron. His meeting with Cameron followed the announcement of his resignation as Prime Minister. The president says he expects Britain's EU exit to be orderly, but says the referendum shows the importance of voting. That's the choice you face this November. Between dividing ourselves up, looking for scapegoats, ignoring the evidence, or realizing that we are all stronger together. President Obama also stressed the importance of not voting based on fear this November. New this morning, an escaped inmate out of Winston County is now back in custody. The Department of Corrections says 24-year-old Jeffrey Chase Miles was recaptured Friday. He was first reported missing Thursday night around 8.30 after leaving his job site in Addison. Miles is serving a five-year sentence for burglary charges. New this morning, defense officials say a ban on transgender members of the military will be lifted starting July 1st. Sources, top, sources say top officials will meet Monday to finalize details of the plan before making the official announcement. Right now, the U.S. military disqualifies transgender troops for medical reasons. Defense Secretary Ash Carter says the ban affects a fraction of the military's 1.3 million active duty members. New this morning, almost two full weeks since a mass shooting at an Orlando nightclub. Pride festivals across the U.S. continue to remember the victims. 49 people were killed in the shooting at Pulse nightclub, the worst mass shooting in U.S. history. The club's owner, Barbara Palma, was a speaker during Pride celebrations in New York last night. The mood was light and festive, but heavy hearts and a sense of sadness could still be felt as the faces and names of those lost flashed across a screen at Pier 26. We will not allow evil to prevail. The LGBT community has fought hard to earn the rights they deserve to live freely and to be who they are without judgment. Now while the world is watching, it is our time to show how love will conquer hate, that we are one pulse, we are one nation. The rally followed an executive order from President Obama designating the Stonewall Inn and Christopher Park across the street in Greenwich, Greenwich Village as a national monument. Well, your time right now is 636. Another case is dropped against comedian Bill Cosby. Coming up, which of his accusers is ending her lawsuit and why it could still head to court. Good Saturday morning to you, Central Alabama. Today is a weather aware day because of the heat and the humidity. Right now at 76 Birmingham, good morning to you, 73 Gadsden, 75 in Aliceville. I have more on the heat advisory, and we're going to talk about the chance for a couple of showers and storms after this.
You're watching the CBS 42 Morning News. Good Saturday morning to you, Central Alabama. How you doing? As you rise and shine, the heat is on. Heat advisory in place today and tomorrow, and because of that, today and tomorrow, both weather aware days. So the afternoon heat advisory will uh, kick in at 12 o'clock this afternoon, and it runs all the way until 9 o'clock this evening. The feels like temperature will easily be between 100 and 105 or 106 when you factor in that humidity. Right now, good morning to you. Gadsden, 73, 72, Anniston, 73, Pell City. Coleman's at 74, along with Hamilton, T-Town, 74. Clanton's at 74, Alabaster, 75. Okay, the counties outlined, outlined in orange, I should say, are the ones that are technically underneath this heat advisory, but I want all of you in central Alabama to keep this heat advisory in the back of your mind. Hydrate, lightweight, light-colored clothing, a lot of water if you're going to be outdoors for any length of time, and don't forget the sunscreen if you're off to the lake and or going to kick it by the pool. Checking out what's up across parts of eastern Mississippi around Louisville. We've got a cluster of showers that are lifting to the north. Can't rule out an isolated shower or storm later on this afternoon. Live look outside at 76 right now. Here's a look at the temperature trend this morning into the afternoon. And watch it go. The mercury climbs into the mid-90s by noon. You factor in the humidity, it'll feel more like 105. High temperature forecast would be 97. Our average high for this time of year, 89. Okay, next seven days, showers and storms increasing Monday. And then the high temperature comes down. It's all relative, right? Back into the upper 80s on Thursday. Okay, NASA confirms its Hubble Space Tote Space uh, telescope here caught the presence of a dark vortex in the atmosphere of Neptune last month. The full visible light image shows the dark features near and below a patch of bright clouds. The vortex is the first one observed on Neptune in the 21st century. NASA says the dark spots are high pressure systems and are usually accompanied by bright companion clouds. Well, look at that. Now, did you know? Now you do. Exactly. You didn't know, now you know. Well, thank you, Michael. Well, we're going to switch to entertainment news. Aaron Sorkin will soon add teacher to his list of credits. The Oscar winning storyteller is offering a master class to aspiring screenwriters. You probably recognize Sorkin's work like A Few Good Men, The Social Network, plus The Newsroom and The West Wing. Students who sign up for the online class will have access to 25 video lessons from Sorkin with interactive assignments and a 30 page workbook. He'll teach topics ranging from dialogue and story pacing to plot and character development. Well, new this morning, another case against comedian Bill Cosby is dropped. 72-year-old Christina Rooley was suing Cosby for defamation, but a statement from her attorney says she accomplished her goal of getting the truth out, thanks to other cases in which Cosby is also facing charges. The statement says Rooley doesn't want to drag other victims to court and wants to get back to living her life. Wooley could bring the suit again before November 2017 because it was dropped without prejudice. Well, your time right now is 6:43. 4th of July is almost here, but the law is cracking down on a holiday staple. Next, what police in California are looking out for across the border. You're watching the CBS 42 Morning News. Beautiful look over Birmingham on this Saturday morning. We'll be right back.
watching the CBS 42 Morning News. New this morning, the 4th of July is right around the corner, and one state is really cracking down on fireworks smugglers. California law enforcement says people are bringing in fireworks from out of the state, and it's been a really big problem in the last few years. Agents have been checking cars at the California Nevada border and confiscating any illegal fireworks. They looked through, they told me to open the, uh, the trunk, and they looked through that. They didn't ask, uh, they asked us if we had any coolers. Uh, didn't ask anything specific, uh, whether we had anything. They just want to look into the trailer. Officials say illegal fireworks are responsible for 2,500 structure and wildfires, this all in just the past five years. Authorities have already seized tens of thousands of pounds of illegal fireworks in Southern California. Tragic news to tell you about this morning out of Texas. A mother is dead after shooting one of her daughters to death and critically wounding the other. It happened in a Bend County neighborhood. Police arrived after the first daughter had been shot to death. Deputies fired and killed the mother just as she was about to shoot her second daughter again. There's no word on what led up to the shooting. The wounded daughter is recovering at the hospital this morning. Well, new this morning, are you a winner? Well, in case you missed the drawing for last night's Mega Millions, the numbers are, drum roll please, 54, 57, 63, 14, 11, and Mega Ball number 11. The jackpot is now at an estimated $363 million after 30 straight drawings without a winner. It's the sixth largest in the game's history. Well, Michael, did, mm. you, did you play? Because mm -mm. I didn't. I did <laughs> You're just not. Shake your head like, mm. but, uh, if only, if only. <laughs> now my wheels are turning. <laughs> right. Literally, they may be going. <laughs> Off to exactly. the east. Well, let's talk about the weather because I know as we were thinking, that was on my mind, that, that, that jackpot right yeah. there. But the weather is on a whole lot of people's minds here as we're feeling those hot temperatures. Yeah, the feels like temperature is going to be dangerous. That's why Ooh. today is a weather aware day and tomorrow as well. So let's uh, talk about the forecast together here. It is hot and the humidity is just adding and abetting to this heat because of the humidity combined with the heat. An afternoon heat advisory will kick off at 12 p.m. and it's going to run through 9 o'clock uh, tonight. The feels like temperature anywhere from 100 to 105 plus. So lightweight, light colored clothing and a lot of water. If you're outdoors, if you're poolside, maybe enjoying one of the area lakes. Don't forget the sunscreen as well. Good morning to you, Gadsden at 73 right now in your neck of the woods, 72, Aniston 74 right now, Coleman. Hamilton, good morning as well, 74, 74 in Tuscaloosa, 75, Alabaster, 74 in Clanton. Okay, here are the counties that are technically underneath this heat advisory. Again, it kicks off at 12 p.m. and runs through 9 uh, tonight. But I want everyone across central Alabama to be aware that it's going to be hot enough that if you don't take care of yourself and take those appropriate measures, the heat can be downright dangerous uh, today into tomorrow. Across parts of East Mississippi around Louisville, a cluster of showers lifting to the north. Uh, these may make it to Starkville. Uh, alma mater here, MSU, go Bulldogs. 76, good morning to you, Birmingham. Live look outside. The wind's calm, dew point 72. Feels like 76, but the feels like temperature will be climbing as the actual air temperature continues to march up into the mid 80s by 9 this morning. The low 90s at 11 o'clock this morning by 12 o'clock this afternoon. I think 95 is a good safe bet and that's not factoring in the humidity. So the feels like temperature at a good 5 to 10 degrees to the numbers you're seeing here. Average high in case you're wondering for this time of year is 89 degrees. You're going to head down to Clanton and enjoy uh, the last day of the Chilton County Peach Festival. I say go for it. The peaches are oh so sweet and juicy. It's going to be hot though. Temperatures in the mid 90s. Again, feels like temperatures well into the triple digits. Storm track, future cast, clouds, radar, and the temperature starting at 8:30 this morning. Area wide, I think most of us in the low to mid 80s will put the clock into motion here and pause it 
at 12:30 this afternoon. 93 uh, in Gadsden, 93 in Birmingham, 96 Jasper. So a few clouds from time to time. An isolated shower can't rule one of those out. A better chance of showers and storms though as we get into Monday and Tuesday. Here's a look at the next three days. Weather aware today and tomorrow because of the heat, showers and storms. Best bet it looks like. Monday afternoon high temperatures above normal. Again, average high for this time of year, 89. It'll feel like the mid 90s with the humidity around. Overnight temperatures not all that low. Average low, in case you're wondering, 69 degrees. All right. It's going to be a hot one. Oh boy, oh boy. Well, like I always tell you, we complain when it's cold, we complain when it's hot, right? Yeah, <laughs> we do. And it's hot in the studio yes. right now. Oh, it is, with all these lights. Well, your time right now is 6.51. A man is in serious condition after another shooting in Birmingham. Next, the surprising suspect police think may have pulled the trigger. We're going to let you know about it. And coming up, they're cuddly and cute and ready to play. We introduced you to two new wolf pups and where you can see them. Coming up. You're watching the CBS 42 Morning News. Right now, a man is in serious condition after a shooting in Woodlawn. Birmingham police responded to the scene at 55th Street North and 1st Avenue North. This was just before 9 last night. Police say the victim was shot in the chest, and the two suspects in the case may be juveniles. The victim was taken to UAB Hospital with serious injuries. He was able to give police a statement about the shooting. So far, we know there have been no arrests made. 
Also happening now in Etowah County, an investigation into an officer involved shooting that's still ongoing. Police say a sheriff's deputy and police officer stopped Jeremy Rona on Owens Drive in Gadsden to ask him about a burglary. At some point, he fired at the officers and they fired back. No officers were hurt, but Rona was hit and taken to the hospital. His injuries are non-life threatening. Authorities have not said what charges he will face, but they do tell us Rona had three active warrants against him for burglary, robbery, and a probation violation. This morning, an Irondale man is behind bars after allegedly stealing and torturing his neighbor's dog to death. Irondale police say 34-year-old David Bearden broke into his neighbor's home and stole his neighbor's rat terrier and some prescription drugs. Later that day, the neighbors found the dog's body on the porch. Bearden faces several charges, including animal cruelty and burglary. He's in the Jefferson County Jail on more than $30,000 bond. An investigation into a drug trafficking organization ends in a drug raid in Bessemer after a search on Norwood Drive. Authorities found cocaine and meth inside a home there. The drugs were worth nearly $250,000. Authorities also found five handguns and an assault rifle, plus $25,000 in cash. Investigators arrested Juan Lopez on trafficking illegal drugs charges. He's in the Jefferson County Jail on a bond of $60,000. New this morning, this cute story right here, two new wolf pups are now part of a pack at the International Wolf Center in Minnesota. Looky here, Axel and Grayback are seven weeks old and are learning how to socialize with wolves at, hum and at humans at the Eli Base Center. The pups were adopted in May and will join the other wolves in August. Axel and Grayback are just temporary names. The Wolf Center is giving the public a chance to rename them. How uh, adorable, super cute, and that brings up a good point. Weather aware day in place because of the heat, so don't forget about your pets as well. The feels like temperature is going to get into the triple digit reading later on today, and the same deal tomorrow. That's why we have weather aware days in place. Hydrate, lightweight, light color clothing. The storm chance today, rain chance 20%. It goes up just a little bit on a Sunday. Best chance of showers and storms on Monday. Our average high for this time of year, 89. It's going to feel more like 105 to maybe Oof. 110 later on this afternoon. I know. Yes, those temperatures are going to be sizzling out there. Well, everyone, enjoy your weekend. We will see you back here tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. We'll do it all again. Take care. Have a good Saturday.